Men you manners. I know the mistress. She's so grand that she never dreams that any servant could dare be disrespectful to her. If she once suspects that you're defying her, out you go. I do defy her. I will defy her. What do I care for her? If you quarrel with the family, I never can marry you. It's the same as if you quarrel with me. You take her part against me, do you? I shall always be dependent upon the goodwill of the family. When I leave their service and start a shop in Sophia, their custom will be half my capital. And their bad word would ruin me. You have no spirit. I should like to catch them saying a word against me. I should have expected more sense from you, Luca. But you're young, you're young. Yes, and you like me the better for it, don't you? But I know some family secrets they wouldn't care to have told young as I am. Let them quarrel with me if they dare. Do you know what they'd do if they heard you talk like that? What could they do? Discharge you for untruthfulness. Who'd believe any stories you told after that? Who'd give you another situation? Who in this house would dare be seen speaking to you ever again? How long would your father be left on his little farm? Child. You don't know the power such high people have over the like of you and me when we try to rise out of our poverty against them. Look at me. Ten years in their service. Do you think I know no secrets? I know things about the mistress that she wouldn't have the master know for a thousand labours. I know things about him that she wouldn't let him hear the last of for six months if I blabbed them to her. I know things about Raina that would break off her match with so How do you know? I never told you. So that's your little secret, is it? I thought it might be something like that. Well, you take my advice. Be respectful and make the mistress feel that no matter what you know or don't know, she can depend on you to hold your tongue and serve the family faithfully. That's what they like. And that's how you'll make most out of them. You have the soul of a servant, Nicola. Yes. That's the secret of success in service. The war. My word, Frit Luca, the war's over. Off with you and get some fresh coffee. You will never put the soul of a servant into me. Hey! <laughs> ah! <laughs> ah! Breakfast out here, eh? Yes, sir. The mistress and Miss Raina have just gone in. Well, go in. Say I've come. And bring me some fresh coffee. It's coming, sir. Have you told the mistress yet? Yes, she's coming. The Serbs haven't run away with you, have they? No, sir. That's right. You brought me some cognac? Yes, sir. That's right. you some fresh coffee. Luke has been looking after me. Oh, the war's over. The treaty was signed three days ago at Bucharest, and the decree for our army to demobilize was issued yesterday. Oh? Mm. Have you let the Austrians force you to make peace? My dear, they didn't consult me. What could I do? I've got to be quite sure that the treaty was an honorable one. It declares peace. Peace! <laughs> but not friendly relations. Remember that. They wanted to put that in, but I insisted on its being stuck out. What more could I do? You, you could have annexed Serbia and made Prince Alexander Emperor of the Balkans. That's what I would have done. <laughs> I don't doubt that in the least, my dear. But I would have to subdue the whole Austrian Empire first. And that would have kept me away from you. And I've missed you greatly. <laughs> oh. <laughs> have you been? Hmm? Oh, my usual sore throats, that's all. Oh, but well, that comes from washing your neck too often. I've often told you, sir. Nonsense, Paul. I don't believe in going too far with these modern customs. All this washing can't be healthy. I mean, it's not natural. There was an Englishman at Philippopolis who used to wet himself all over with cold water every morning when he got up. Disgusting. It all comes to the English. 
Their plight is so dirty, they have to be perpetually washing themselves. My father never had a bath in his life. Mm. Lived to be 98, healthiest man in Bulgaria. I don't mind a good wash once a week to keep up my position, but every day I carry the thing to a ridiculous extreme. Paul, you're a barbarian at heart still. Oh. I hope you behaved yourself before all those Russian officers. Oh, I did my best. I took care to show them we uh, have a library. <laughs> ah, but you didn't tell them that we had an electric bell in it. I had one put up. It was an electric bell. Hmm? You touch a button, something tinkles in the kitchen, and Nicola comes up. Why not shout for it? Civilised people don't shout for their servants, Paul. I've learnt that while you were away. Uh, I tell you, I've learnt something too. Civilised people don't hang up their washing where visitors can see it. So you better have that put away somewhere else. That's hmm? absurd, Paul. I don't believe really refined people notice such things. <laughs> Well, sir, just... Nicola! Don't shout, Paul. It really isn't nice. Bosh! Nicola! Yes, sir. Are you deaf? Can't you hear, Major Serrano? Yes, Major. You must talk to him, my dear, until my Ina takes him off my hands. He bores my life out about not promoting him. Over my head, if you please. You'll have to get a promotion when he marries Raina. Besides, the country should insist upon having at least one native general. Yes. Yeah. So they can throw away whole brigades instead of regiments. It's no use, my dear. He hasn't the slightest chance of emotion until we're quite sure that the peace will be a lasting one. Major Sergius Serrano. Whoa, there, my old buddy. Ah! Mm. <laughs> Get on, ready, Sergius. Glad to see you. My dear Sergius. My dear mother. If I may call you so. That mother-in-law, Sergius. Mother-in-law. Sit down. Have some coffee. Thank you. None for me. You look superb. The campaign has improved you, Sergius. Everybody here is mad about you. We're all wild with enthusiasm about your magnificent cavalry charge. Madam, it was the cradle and the grave of my military reputation. How so? I won the battle the wrong way while our worthy Russian generals were losing it the right way. In short, I upset their plans and wounded their self-esteem. Two Cossack colonels had their regiments routed on the most correct principles of scientific warfare. Two major generals got killed, strictly according to military etiquette. The two colonels are now major generals. And I am still a simple major. You shall not remain so, Sergius. The women are on your side and we shall see that justice mm. is done you. Mm, it is too late. I have only waited for the peace to send in my resignation. Your resignation? You must withdraw it. I never withdraw. No, no, who would suppose you would do such a thing? Everyone that knew me, but enough of myself and my affairs. How is Raina? And where is Raina? Raina is here. <laughs> Pretty, isn't it? She always appears at the right moment. Yes, hmm? she listens for it. It's an abominable habit. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy! <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, my little pet. Oh. And so, Sergius, you are no longer a soldier. I am no longer a soldier. Soldiering, my dear madam, is the coward's art of attacking mercilessly when you are strong and keeping out of harm's way when you are weak. That is the whole secret of successful fighting. Get your enemy at a disadvantage and never on any account fight him on equal terms. <laughs> but they wouldn't let us stand up and make a fair fight of it. Well, I suppose soldiering is a trade, like any other trade. Precisely. But I have no ambition to shine as a tradesman. So I have taken the advice of that bagman of a captain that settled the exchange of prisoners at Pirot and given it up. What, Serge? That Swiss fellow. Uh, I haven't thought about that exchange since he overreached us about those horses. Well, of course he overreached us. His father was a hotel and livery stable keeper. He owed his first step to his knowledge in horse dealing. Ha! He was a soldier. Every inch a soldier. Hey, if only I'd bought those horses for my regiment. Instead of foolishly leading it into danger, I should have been a field marshal now. A Swiss? What was he doing in the Serbian army? Well, volunteer, of course. Keep on picking up his profession. <laughs> we wouldn't have been able to begin fighting if these foreigners hadn't shown us how to do it. We knew nothing about it. Neither did the Serbs. <laughs> Are there many Swiss officers in the Serbian army? No. 
all Austrian assessors, all our officers were Russians. The only Swiss I came across. I never trust a Swiss again. He humbugged us into giving him 50 able-bodied men for 200 worn-out charges. <laughs> they weren't even eatable. We were two innocent children in the hands of that consummate soldier, Major. Simply two innocent little children. What was he like? <coughs> Raina, what a silly question. He was like a commercial traveller in uniform, bourgeois to his boots. Certainly. <laughs> Tell Captain that queer story his friend told us about how he escaped after Slipnitsa. You remember? Hmm? About his being hid by two women. Oh, yes. Quite a romance. He was serving in the very battery that I so unprofessionally charged. Being a thorough soldier, he ran away like the rest of them with our cavalry at his heels. <laughs> <laughs> to escape their sabers, he climbed up a water pipe and made his way into the bedroom of a young Bulgarian lady. <laughs> The young lady was enchanted by his commercial traveller's manners. She very modestly entertained him for an hour or so and then called in her mother, lest her conduct should appear unmaidenly. <laughs> the old lady was equally fascinated and the fugitive was sent on his way in the morning, disguised in an old coat belonging to the master of the house who was away at the war. <laughs> Your life in the camp has made you coarse, Sergius. I did not think he would have repeated such a story before me. She's right, Sergius. If such women exist, we should be spared the knowledge of them. Oh, pooh, nonsense. What does it matter? No, Petkoff, I was wrong. I beg your pardon. I have behaved abominably. Forgive me, Raina. And you too, madam. The glimpses I have had of the seamy side of life during the last few months have made me cynical, but I should not have brought my cynicism here, Raina, least of all in your presence. I must... Stop the nonsense, Sergius. I've never heard so much fuss about nothing. A soldier's daughter should be able to stand up without flinching to a little strong conversation. Come. It's time for us to get to business. We have to make up our minds about how to get those three regiments back to Philippopolis. There's no forage for them on the Sophia route, you see. Now, come along. Poor. Don't you spare Sergius for a few moments? Rhinus hardly seen him yet. Perhaps I can help settle about the regiments. Impossible, dear madam. Oh, uh, no, you, know, I'm, you stay, must... my dear Sergius. Mm, There's mm, no mm, hurry. Mm. I want a word or two with Paul myself. Now, dear. Come and see the electric bell. Am I forgiven? My hero, my king, my queen. Oh, how I've envied you, Sergius. You've been out in the world, on the field of battle, able to prove yourself there worthy of any woman in the world. Whilst I have had to sit at home, inactive, dreaming, useless, doing nothing that could give me the right to call myself worthy of any man. Dearest, all my deeds have been yours. You have inspired me. I have gone through the war like a knight in a tournament with his lady looking down at him. And you have never been absent from my thoughts for a moment. Sergius, I think we two have found the higher love. When I think of you, I feel I could never do a base deed or think an ignoble thought. My lady and my saint. My lord, my monk. Shh. Let me be the worshipper, dear. You little know how unworthy even the best man is of a girl's pure passion. I trust you. I love you. You will never disappoint me, Sergius. I can't pretend to talk indifferently before her. My heart is too full. I will go and get my hat, and then we can go out into lunchtime. Wouldn't you like that? Be quick. If you are five minutes, it will seem like five hours.
Luca, do you know what the higher love is? No, sir. Very fatiguing thing to keep up for any length of time, Luca. One feels the need of some relief after it. Perhaps you would like some coffee, sir. Thank you, Luca. Oh, sir, you know I didn't mean that. I'm surprised at you. I'm surprised at myself, Luca. What would Sergius, the hero of Slivnitsa, say if he saw me now? What would Sergius, the apostle of the higher love, say if he saw me now? What would the half-dozen Sergiuses that keep popping in and out of this handsome figure of mine say if he caught us here? Do you consider this figure handsome, Luca? Oh, let me go, sir. I shall be disgraced. Oh, will you let go? No! Then stand back where we can't be seen. Have you no common sense? Ah, that's reasonable. You may have been seen from the windows. Miss Ryan is sure to be spying about after you. Take care, Luca. I may be worthless enough to betray the higher love, but do not you insult it. Oh, not for the world, sir, I'm sure. May I go on with my work, please, now? You are a provoking little witch, Luca. If you were in love with me, would you spy out of windows on me? Well, you see, sir, since you say you are half a dozen different gentlemen all at once, I should have a great deal to look after. Witty, as well as pretty. No! I don't want your kisses. Gentle folk are all alike. You making love to me behind Miss Ryan's back. Is she doing the same behind yours? Look! It shows how little you really care. If! Our conversation is to continue, Luca. You will please remember that a gentleman does not discuss the conduct of the lady he is engaged to with her maid. It's so hard to know what a gentleman considers right. I thought by your trying to kiss me that you'd given up being so particular. Devil. Devil! I expect one of the six of you is very like me, sir. I'm only Miss Ryan has made. Which one of the six is the real man? That's the question that torments me. One of them is a hero, another a buffoon, another a humbug. Another perhaps a bit of a blackguard. And one at least is a coward. Jealous, like all cowards. Luca. Yes. Who is my rival? You shall never get that out of me for love or money. Why? Never mind why. Besides, you would tell that I told you and I should lose my place. No, on the honor of... On the honor of a man capable of behaving as I have been behaving for the last five minutes. Who is he? I don't know. I never saw him. I only heard his voice through the door of her room. Damnation! How dare you! Oh, I mean no harm. You've no right to take up my words like that. The mistress knows all about it. And I tell you, if that gentleman ever comes here again, Miss Raina will marry him whether he likes it or not. I know the difference between the sort of manner you and she put on before one another and the real manner. Now listen you to me! That's so tight, you're hurting me! That doesn't matter. You have stained my honor by making me a party to your eavesdropping and you have betrayed your mistress. Please! That shows you are an abominable little clod of common clay with the soul of a servant! know how to hurt with your tongue as well as with your hands. But I don't care. Now I've found out that whatever clay I'm made of, you're made of the same. As for her, she's a liar. And her fine heirs are a cheat, and I'm worth six of her. Luca! A gentleman has no right to hurt a woman under any circumstances. I beg your pardon. That sort of apology may satisfy a lady. Of what use is it to a servant? Ah. You wish to be paid for the hurt? No. I want my hurt made well. How? Never. I'm ready. What's the matter? Have you been 
flirting with Luca? No, no, no. Ah, how can you think such a thing? Oh, forgive me, dear. It was only a jest. I'm so happy today. I'm sorry to disturb you, children, but Paul is distracted with the regiment. He doesn't know how to send them to Philippopolis, and he objects to every suggestion of mine. You must come in and help, Sergius. He's in here. But we're just going for a walk. I shall not be long. Wait just five minutes. I shall wait in full view of the library windows. Be sure you draw father's attention to me. And if you're a moment longer than five minutes, I shall go in and fetch you. Regiments or no regiments. Very well. Ah. <laughs> Imagine them meeting that Swiss and him telling them the whole story. The very first thing your father asked for was the old coat we sent him off in. A nice mess you've got us into. A little beast. Little beast? What little beast? To go and tell. Oh, if I had him here, I'd cram him with chocolate cream so he couldn't ever speak again. Don't talk such stuff. <sighs> tell me the truth, Raina. How long was he in your room before you came for me? Oh, I forget. You cannot forget. Did he really climb up after the soldiers were gone, or was he there when the officers searched the room? No. Oh, yes. I think he must have been there, then. You think? Oh, <sighs> Raina, Raina. Is anything ever straightforward with you? If Sergius is to find out, it will be all over between you. Oh, I know Sergius is your pet. I sometimes wish you could marry him instead of me. You would just suit him. You could pet him and spoil him and mother him to perfection. Well, upon my word. I always feel a longing to do or say something dreadful to him, to shock his propriety, to scandalise the five senses out of him. I don't care whether he finds out about the chocolate cream soldier or not. I half hope he may. And what should I be able to tell your father, pray? My poor father. As if he could help himself. Oh, if you were only ten years younger. There's a gentleman just called, madam. A Serbian officer. Serb? And how dare he... I forgot. We're at peace now. I suppose we shall have them calling every day to pay their compliment. <laughs> well, if he's an officer, why don't you tell your master? He's in the library with Major Saranov. Why'd you come to me? Hmm? But he asked for you, madam. And I don't think he knows who you are. He said the lady of the house. He gave me this little ticket for you. Captain Blunchley? That's a German name. Swiss, madam. Swiss? What's he like? He has a big carpet bag, madam. Oh, heavens. He's come to return the coat. Send him away. Say we're not at home. Ask him to leave his address and tell him I'll write to him. No, stop. That will never do. Wait. The master and Major Saranoff are busy in the library, aren't they? Yes, madam. Bring the gentleman out here at once. Be very polite to him. Don't delay. Here. Leave that here. Go straight back to him. Yes, madam. Luca. Yes, madam. Is the library door shut? I think so, madam. If not, shut it as you pass through. Yes, madam. Stop. Tell Nicola to bring his bag here after him. Don't forget. His bag? Yes. Here, as soon as possible. Be quick. How, how, how can a man be such a fool? Such a moment to select. Captain Blunchley. Ah, Captain Blunchley. I am very glad to see you. But you must leave this house at once. My husband and my future son-in-law have just returned. They know nothing. If they did, the consequences would be terrible. You are a foreigner. You do not feel our national animosities as we do. We still hate the Serbs. The effect of the peace on my husband has been to make him feel like a lion, balked of his prey. If he were to discover our secret, he would never forgive me, and my daughter's life would hardly be safe. Will you, as the chivalrous gentleman and soldier that you are, please leave this house at once before he finds you here? At once, gracious lady. I only came to thank you and to return the coat you lent me. 
if you will allow me to take it out of my bag and leave it with your servant as I pass out, um, I need to detain you no further. Oh, you cannot think of going that way out. <laughs> This is the shortest way. Many thanks. So glad to have been of service to you. Goodbye. But my bag. Oh, I will send it on to you. You will leave me your address. Oh! oh. My dear Captain Brunchley, those stupid people of mine thought I was out here instead of in the library. I saw you through the window. I was wondering why you didn't come in. A Saran office with me. Do you remember him, don't you? Oh. Ah! Welcome! Our friend, the enemy. <laughs> no longer the enemy, happily. I hope you've called us a friend and not about prisoners or horses. <laughs> oh, Quite as a friend, Paul. I was just asking Captain Blunchley to stay to lunch, but he declares he must leave at once. <laughs> Impossible, Blunchley. We want you here badly. We have to send on three cavalry regiments to Philippopolis. We don't in the least know how to do it. Mm, Philippopolis. The forage is the trouble, I suppose. <laughs> That's it. You see, he sees the whole thing at once. No, I think I can show you how to manage that. Invaluable man, come along! Oh, a chocolate cream soldier. Oh, Frank. Ah. Don't you see that we have a guest here, Captain Blunchley? One of our new Serbian friends. Oh, <laughs> how silly of me. I made a beautiful ornament this morning for the ice pudding, and that stupid Nicola has just put a pile of plates on it and spoiled it. I hope you didn't think that you were the chocolate cream soldier, Captain Blunchley. I can assure you I did. Your explanation was a relief. <coughs> And since when, pray, have you taken to cooking? Hmm? Oh, while you were away, it is her latest fancy. Uh, and has Nicola taken to drinking? Mm, he used to be careful enough. Yes, he shows Captain Blunchley out there when he knew perfectly well that I was in the library. And then he goes downstairs and breaks Miss Raina's chocolate soda. <laughs> he must be... Are you mad, Nicola? Sir? What do you want that for? Uh, my lady's orders, Major. Why, Luca what told me. To... Why should I have ordered you to bring Captain Blunch's luggage out here? <laughs> what are you thinking of, Nicola? I beg your pardon, Captain, I'm sure. My fault, madam. I hope you'll overlook it. <laughs> you better slam that bag, too, that one, Miss Raquel's ice pudding. No! Mm -oh! Pick on! You battered finger donkey! Yes, Major! Oh, Stand you! He's gone out of hand while I'm away! Oh, black eye, infernal, oh, black I'll teach him! Oh, 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 Sack oh, next out of there! Doesn't Ooh, matter. I'll clear out the whole ice establishment! Ding. <laughs> there, there. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I'll have no more nonsense about you going away. Mm? You know quite well you don't have to go back to Switzerland yet. Until you do go back, you'll stay with us. Mm? Oh, do, Captain Blunchley. Come, Catherine. It's you he's afraid of. Press him and he'll stay. Of course. I shall be only too delighted if Captain Blunchley wishes to stay. He knows my wishes. <laughs> I'm at Madam's orders. Ah! Oh, that settles it. <laughs> of course. You see, you must stay. Well, if I must, I must. <laughs>